All right, boys and girls. Well, we're back. I thought I'd uh, give you a shot of uh, the disc brake setup, basically. Uh, changed out new calipers. Here's the slotted rotors. A whole lot better than those big grooved messes. Um, everything I do on myself, I did have to get the new rotors pressed on to the hub assembly here and new wheel studs pressed in. Uh, but that wasn't too bad at a local shop. So what we're doing today is I had a little bit of slop, which I thought was in the bearings. And it's not in the bearings. It's in the lower ball joints. And uh, I probably won't do a whole video on a how-to, um, but I am gonna have to disassemble this down, take off the spindle, so who knows what I'll show you. Uh, and basically got a slop here in the bottom. Let's see if I can get it on camera here. You can't really see it down there. But uh, Cody Ringlestar, did a pretty good video uh, on his uh, four that he did and uh, basically can be doing the same thing it's the uh, lower ball joint upper ball joint that rides your C knuckle that allows your tires to turn so stay tuned all right so back from the uh, parts house guys uh, I was only able to get the lowers in Moog which is what I prefer it's what I use on my tie rod ends uh, they're still made in the USA. They're always serviceable. They're very well built. Uh, the parts master stuff isn't too bad. Uh, however, it's a little bit on the cheaper side. Uh, just so you know, my estimate to get this job done was around $500. Um, these were $44 a piece. These were like $20 bucks a piece, $19 bucks a piece. Uh, the Moogs in the upper were $48. Uh, they just didn't have them in stock. And always open the stuff make sure the bags aren't open uh, every time you do it because uh, I was doing it and the guy would kind of looked at me funny and sure enough one of the move boxes was missing the castle nut and the, uh, the split ring so we got that so you're looking at about 125 bucks roughly 80 and 40 and then the old Harbor Freight four-wheel drive ball joint that was another 59 bucks and uh, we'll see if we can get it done All right, there's also eight washers on here, so when you pull the dust cap off, you're ready to catch eight washers. One in the grease. That's the only thing keeping this guy on. This is your caliper that holds your brakes. Now here is your spindle. And it might need a little love tap to get it off. Nothing too crazy. Just kind of break it free of there. Make sure you can see all this. See, this is your spindle. This is what your brake and your wheel and everything rides on the bearings. On the inside, there's a seal, and this is what's called a spindle bearing. This is what I had thought was maybe out um, just for the amount of wobble that I had on here. And then you've got some dust seals, and this is your axle. It slides right out. this lives you down to your steering knuckle. Basically this is what turns. It pivots on an upper ball joint and identically the same thing in there is a lower ball joint. And the issue I'm having is they're just loose. Um, it's going to take a little bit of muscling with the giant crescent wrench and uh, my socket barely fits in there but I do have a socket that goes down there. So I'm going to get that done and uh, then just a big effing hammer and uh, trying to unlock this and uh, shoot it down the bottom and then we'll get to pressing. All 
I know the lighting's not great. Let's see if we can. But uh, basically, we got that uh, Harbor Freight C clamp in my bench vise um, using a large crescent. I use the uh, electric impact uh, when I can, basically just to speed up coming in and out. But it's really not powerful enough. You really need kind of an air impact uh, to go behind this. But this is what I keep in the truck. It uh, makes you know quick disassembly of a lot of things. Uh, even if you have to use your hand to kind of break it free. Uh, you know, then it's only two seconds worth of uh, the impact wrench here to get uh, a long nut off. Basically, what we're doing is we're starting on the lower, and uh, you know, when you get the kit, it's basically a bunch of these spacers that allow you to push through the ball joint through this, and so there's just room inside the socket. Uh, Later we can modify this to do U-joints and a lot of other things. And so this will be a new uh, probably kit item that I keep in the truck. Uh, not that you're going to be doing ball joints all the time, but if I'm planning an off-road trip, uh, definitely U-joints are something you may run into. Uh, they're on your drive lines, they're on your front uh, drive shafts, so uh, it's, a, it's a nice tool to have uh, to be able to do trail side. So. Anyway, uh, we're just going to be cranking on this thing and push this out. And then uh, basically you're going to run this rod through the bottom one in order to push uh, the top one out. That's why you do it in that order. And then reverse. We'll uh, push the top one in, or the bottom one in, and then the top one out in. So I'm going to do that. The lighting's not great over here, and I don't have too much work, room to work. So um, I'll probably won't do it on camera, but uh, I'll show you when we're done. All right, got one side done. Um, here's the new hotness. There's the old and busted. And uh, basically, what you're going to see is this moves, but it's stiff, nice controlled. And then there is this one. It just does whatever it wants. So that's why we're changing these out. There's the new ones. There's the old ones. All right, got this pressed out. Honestly, it took about 10 minutes on the first one, and the second one took about two minutes uh, once you figure out how everything's supposed to go. So, got them out. Just going to clean up the uh, surfaces a little bit, clean out some of the uh, the gunk on the inside there. Uh, the sort of scary thing is the bottom uh, U-joint should have a split ring, uh, much like we just did on the, uh, the hub axle uh, that keeps it from being able to back out. And um, my driver's side didn't have one. And so that's kind of scary. Second thing is these large castle nuts. They have these grooves in them. So when you tie them down on top of here, that hole can fit a cotter pin, which is kind of like a little hairpin. And that hairpin goes through that hole and it won't allow this nut to back out. My driver's side did not have that either. So not sure who worked on this last or whatnot. The, uh, the other thing you'll notice if I pan over the new ones, these are both serviceable uh, ball joints. These have no grease zerk fitting and uh, these both have a hole in the bottom and what you do so that these don't get knocked off because this is on the bottom of your steering knuckle that could get torn off on a rock pretty easy. Uh, as you put the zerk fitting in, you grease them, then you back it out and then there's basically like a small plug you'll see up here which is a very small bolt that has the same thread and you put that on there uh, a lot of times where that axle was that went through here you don't have the clearance to keep a zerk fitting down there and then certainly on the bottom you're going to get it knocked off on a rock or a stump or something so basically you you keep these around you pull out the little bolt grease them and then put the bolt back and uh, that's the best way to service them but Hopefully it'll be nice and tight, and uh, I'm just kind of getting the dirt and the crud, uh, crud cleaned off these. And uh, sorry, my neighbor's working on door frames or something over there. But uh, yeah, you know it's it's a it's a good feeling to go in a hardware store and have a bunch of guys you know that are willing to work on their rigs. And um, you know there's some that wish they knew more. Uh, you know I learn by doing. And uh, this job here, this is on my second day. I also learned I need another tool. Uh, so that's on its way. It will be here tomorrow. So this is a three-day project. But, you know, for $200 instead of 500 something And uh, the knowledge of how everything works and that I know everything's new and the split rings are back. The, you know, everything's the way it's supposed to be is, uh, is really priceless. 
and uh, I don't see why you wouldn't want to know how to do that um, you know unless you just don't care to know that stuff but I'm gonna stop rambling and get back to work and uh, I'll probably film some more stuff later well there's other things you find out like other special parts you need uh, like this spanner socket um, on top of here is a tapered insert that gets threaded in there and if you can see so this basically threads in there so that this taper exactly matches you'll also see it's got four little prongs on there that match this special wrench that allows you to take that off the reason being is your new ball joint has its own taper that wants to be nice and clean that's machined to fit the new insert so you want to make sure you've got stuff like that which I didn't know now I do and now I have the part hopefully I won't be doing ball joints all the time but uh, still 20 bucks for this silly thing uh, is still a whole lot cheaper than going to a shop but now the taper fits that perfectly